second half of the hazard section is uh, weather hazards. And first thing you need to understand is the global atmospheric circulation model. You need to understand that like convection currents, warm air rises because it's lighter and it arises in areas of low pressure along the equator. Uh, as it rises, it cools, condenses, creates clouds, and then it travels north and south of the equator. And about 30 degrees, um, lati 33 degrees latitude, it sinks back down, okay, as dry, cold, uh, dry, dry, yeah, dry air, cold air, and then warms up again. So at the equator, it rises, creates clouds, huge thunderstorms. Surprise, surprise, we have tropical rainforest there. At 30 degrees, it sinks, it's dry, there's no moisture left. We have deserts, hot deserts usually. And then it picks up moisture again, goes back up around 66 degrees, uh, 60 degrees latitude around the UK, unfortunately for us, creates more clouds and more rain. And then sinks again at the poles at 90 degrees, hence the Arctic and Antarctic uh, cold deserts, okay? Uh, prevailing winds in the nor northern hemisphere spin clockwise, whereas in the southern hemisphere they spin anti-clockwise, okay? Um, you just need to understand it's a way in which the Earth spreads heat around its planet and therefore avoids the center from, or the equator from cooking and the poles from um, freezing. Um, tropical storms, well, they form, uh, over, uh, major tropical storms form over 28 degrees Celsius. Tropical storm can form over, over 26, so we basically say 27 degrees Celsius or more. It can form a tropical storm. Only happens on five between five and 20, 25 degrees north and south of the equator because of the Coriolis effect, which is a spin of the Earth. The rotation of the Earth causes winds to get deflected. There is no Coriolis force on the equator itself. Okay, um, the way it forms: heat. Uh, hot, the, the the sun heats the water that causes the air above it to heat. It then evaporates. It gets uh, replaced uh, by uh, cold air that heats itself, evaporates, condenses, clouds. The cloud starts to spin with the Coriolis effect. The air sinks into the eye, uh, and uh, that spinning effect makes the storm move and it loses energy when it hits land. Okay. The features of a storm: it's got a storm eye, which is um, the what you can see. It's the circle you can see from satellite images. Eye wall is a wall on the eye. It's, um, the storm eye is um, calm conditions, high pressure, whereas the eye wall is extreme, extreme, extreme conditions with strong winds of up to thirty, uh, uh, up to one hundred and seventy miles an hour, etc. Okay. Storm's going to be about 300 miles long. We've got strong wind, torrential rain, uh, and um, climate change is increasing the distribution, increasing the intensity, not necessarily increasing the frequency, which is a bit odd. The case that you need to learn about is Typhoon Haiyan, um, the one we do at least in red and green. It's storm, uh, it happened in 2013. It was a uh, super typhoon, super typhoon Yolanda, actually called over there. Uh, category 5 storm, 170 miles an hour winds. Uh, primary effects, 40,000 homes were damaged, 90% of Tacloban was destroyed because Tacloban was at the back of a bay, so it acted like a funnel, and as the water was pushed in, the storm surge of 5 metres created a massive wave. Um, secondary effects, we had 6,300 people who died, and like I said in the video on tectonic hazards, death is a secondary impact because people drown from the storm surge, they die because of destruction, they don't die uh, just randomly for no reason, okay? 600,000 people were displaced and made homeless. Immediate response, there was 1,200 evacu evacuation centers set up. The U.S. sent its aircraft carrier George Washington to provide search and rescue and provide an airport for a help to arrive, mainly because the airport was being used as a shelter area and for medical uh, medical treatments. Long-term response, cash for work program was one of the most successful programs. People were paid £70 a day to clear the rubbles, provide them a purpose in life, give them some money, and actually help to clear the debris. Oxfam also replaced all the 20,000 fishing boats that were destroyed, allowed people to work again. How can reduce the risk of a tropical storm? Well, you can, um, there's a reason people live in these areas, okay? Family reason, employment reasons, um, lack of education, a lack of funds to be able to leave that area if they wanted to. What we can do is we can monitor, predict, okay? Uh, we can use satellite images, we can use previous data, uh, we can have, um, we can use um it's ocean temperatures uh to predict where the storms are going to occur we can protect practice drills emergency kit evacuate route protect buildings we can plan we can protect we can create um there's a, a there was a, you can have uh cyclone shelters you've got a picture of one here in bangladesh people go there bangladesh bangladesh is a country that has done unbelievably well at helping people survive tropical storms because it's more and more vulnerable to it Okay, you then have to learn about extreme weather in the UK. Um, extreme weather is weather that's different to normal. Uh, there's the example of the heat wave in 2003 that killed 2,545 uh, people. You've got Boswell Castle floods of 2004, Somerset floods of 20, level floods of 2014, the winter of 2010, which was colder since 1962, temperatures dropped to minus 20. We in, in, in red and green do Cockermouth because it's, um, it's a big case of It's also quite a funny name. Uh, it's the wettest winter on record. Urbanization meant there was more impermeable surface. All the facts are here, you need to learn them, okay? <laughs>